back to Wrestling and Rants and Views. This is episode 31, and as always, I'm your host, Big Mike. And this is a raw review. It's going to be somewhat quick, because I just did a review prior to this. And not looking at the time, I went something like 22 minutes. And I'm sick of making part twos. I don't know why it's such a pet peeve of mine, having part one and part two. It's just, I hate it. And I hate the fact that YouTube's only allotting, allotting me 15 minutes to do these, because I rant. Hence being the name of Wrestling Rants and Reviews. Um, I just rant and rant and rant and rant. So I'll make this a little bit quicker. Um, I'll give you the results. The quick results first. There's only four matches anyways. And then I'll rant on what I thought of the show. Um, so the first match being Edge and Christian versus Alberto Del Rio and Brodus Clay. And yes, for the stipulation, Edge not being allowed to touch Alberto Del Rio was lifted for this show. Uh, with the Raw General Manager, and we'll get into that, what I think of that in a minute. Um, the winner here is Edging Christian. Um, Edge speared Brodus Clay for the victory. Um, at the end of the match, Del Rio had Christian in the arm breaker. Edge, ran, Edge broke it up and ran him off to the back. Came back to check out Christian, only for Del Rio to come back and hit the, the arm breaker on uh, the arm breaker arm bar on Edge. Uh, to finish the segment. Um, the next match we have, which was like an hour later. <laughs> um, damn near an hour later. Um, <clears throat> Justin Gabriel versus Santino Marella with Core ringside. And Santino also had Cosmo off ringside as well with a big show. And Kane. And they had this because it's going to be an eight-man tag at WrestleMania. The Core versus Kozlov and Santino. Big show Kane. Another filler match, it doesn't need to be there, but anyways, the winner is Santino Marella after uh, Kozlov trips up Gabriel, and they all celebrate doing the trombone. And yes, the trombone. Even Kane and the Big Show and Kozlov do it, even though they're supposed to be monsters and not so comical. But the Big Show can get away with it, because yes, he's a bit of a comedian or comic-type person. So, moving on, next match. Way down here. <laughs> Almost after another hour of garbage. Um, we got Jack Swagger versus Jerry Lawler, where earlier in the night the general manager made this made this match. Um, Jack Swagger gets the upper hand after a distraction from Michael Cole. Beats up Lawler quickly. Throws him over to the announce table. I'm not the announce table, sorry. Where the ring bell is, or the timekeeper and the ring announcers are. Swagger goes to get in control of um, Lawler again. Lawler thus has a steel chair and beats up Swagger. Then he sees Cole. He wants to go after Cole, but he is restrained. And Cole just ends up throwing Pop in his face to end that. Um, next match is Dolph Ziggler and Sheamus versus John Morrison and Daniel Bryan. Before this match starts, we see Vicky Guerrero come out. And she's doing the pose with John, Mo John Morrison's pose with John Morrison's glasses on. Also, John Morris, Titan Tron, and theme music playing. Um, the winner of this match is Sheamus and Dolph Ziggler. Sheamus beats Daniel Bryan with Pale Justice. Um, pretty decent match for a quick match, really. Um, everybody gets in a decent amount of offense and furthers each other's storylines going to WrestleMania. But Sheamus is uh, the ultimate winner. Um, next match. Do we have another match? No, that's it. That's it for matches. So what do we have? Three matches tonight? Isn't that wonderful? One, two, yeah, maybe four. Maybe four matches. What we got? Edge Christian match. Justin Gabriel. Santino, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, four. As always, typical Monday Night Raw. Four matches. Three of them are like two minutes long, and the other one is always the opener, which seems to go the longest. So, you know, this leading into the review part of Raw. Um, to me, this is just a preview for WrestleMania, as they've all been for the last month or so. Um, sorry, I'm itching like crazy, folks. I don't know. I, think, I don't know what's going on. I think I'm allergic to Monday Night Raw. I'm starting to break out here. But uh, we opened with Raw, not with just the tag match, but uh, we had CM Punk in the middle of the ring trying to get some heel heat uh, with the crowd saying, you know, Chicago may be his people, but so is Nexus. But he's had 
He greatly sat by and watched them all get punched in the head by CM Punk, thus forcing a few boos out of the crowd. Um, he says that he's a realist and uh, Orton's in a fantasy world. Shows a clip from last week of him beating him up with the pipe in the leg. Um, Orton comes down to the ring limping with bandages on his knee after the attack. Um, there's an altercation. CM Punk ends up getting a second rope DDT. Um, Punk goes for the kick, or the punt, I should say. <coughs> Sorry about that, that was gross. Um, <clears throat> oh god. But anyways, <laughs> um, anyways, CM Punk is laying there, waiting for the punt. Uh, it doesn't happen, because uh, Orton can't do it, because his leg's too sore, he trips up. Uh, CM Punk just gets the upper hand, gives him a quick beating, followed by the GTS, uh, to close out that segment. That's when we went into the tag team match and where we found out that Edge was able to hit Del Rio, which makes no sense for me. Um, he's not allowed to hit him on SmackDown, but he's allowed to on Raw. And for me, it would, it would mean more going to WrestleMania if they cannot touch each other. If there had been just a confrontation where they want to go at each other so badly, but they can't, I think that would lead better into WrestleMania. Um, but I guess maybe they're looking for more heat on Del Rio going into Mania. Because they think they're going to put the strap on them. Um, I really do. Um, but then again, it all depends what happens with Cena Miz. If Miz retains, I think Edge will retain. Um, but if Del Rio wins, I think Cena will win. They're never usually two, two heel champions at the same time. Well, he's heavyweight champion, WWE champion. But uh, I think they just want more heat on Del Rio. So maybe that's why they did that. Um... I don't know, but they should not have had a confrontation until WrestleMania, in my opinion. Uh, would have made the match that much better. Um, we go to a couple segments in the back. We see uh, Miz and Alex Riley in the back very shortly, um, saying that you know they're going to give a piece of their mind tonight to The Rock and John Cena. We have the WWE logo that's usually held by chains upside down, so it looks like the M for Miz. Uh, we get a lot of hype for Triple H and John um, Undertaker going to go face to face tonight. Um, we see Snooki and Trish Stratus at a bar at the Jersey Shore, saying um, how they're training Snooki to be a wrestler, and how Trish is learning a thing or two from Snooki how to defend off guys or party like you know Guido or Guidette or whatever the hell they are, uh, poofy hair bitches or whatever they call themselves. Um, we leave that segment for a minute just to go right back. Lake Cool's there for some reason. And it starts being a ballroom brawl. Um, and they end up eventually get separated. And that's that. Um, Triple H and Undertaker do face off. Uh, Undertaker comes down first. Followed by Triple H. Triple H goes to do the whole water spinning routine as he normally does. Um, but he's cut off by Undertaker's dongs. <laughs> I know that sounds weird, but music... Um, the, the, the bells toll um, as Triple H goes to do this. And they have a bit of a stare down. Shawn Michaels' music hits. Of all people, Shawn Michaels is in the house tonight. Um, he comes down. And I think, again, if it wasn't for him, um, this th these promos probably would not have been that good. Um, because earlier, before this, they showed another vignette or video promo. And these video promos for Taker and Triple H, in my opinion, have a lot been a lot better than the in-ring um, personal promos because they just keep saying the same thing. The streak, the streak, it will end, I will die trying, rest in peace. You know? So, who knows, that may have been what it was going to be again if Shawn Michaels wasn't there. Shawn Michaels goes on and talks about them both. And then Triple H talks about Sean going soft. That's why he lost. And that's why he's going to do what Sean couldn't do. And then Taker gets on the mic. Basically just berates Sean a little bit. Puts him over. But at the same time says Sean wasn't able to do it. He's going to go in the Hall of Fame knowing that the Undertaker is the one who made his career come to an end. <coughs> yada, yada, yada. Sean goes to kick him in the face. He gets blocked. He goes for the choke slam. Triple H splits it up. Gets in the face of Taker. Says he's got a surprise. And Shawn Michaels... Is going to tell him what the surprise is. Sean never tells him. Um, and he eventually just walks away. And Triple H is amazed that Sean didn't say what his surprise is. Or his secret is. Um, to me there's been speculation. Um, 
across the internet that it's going to be Shawn Michaels going to be some sort of enforcer or special referee. Without him saying it on Monday night, he may say it tomorrow or on SmackDown. Or it'll be a surprise to WrestleMania or at the Hall of Fame. Um, there's still time that he can do this. If he does do this, Taker will win. Um, you know, that's just because they think we're stupid. So we think, oh, Shawn Michaels has just stacked the cards against The Undertaker. He's definitely going to lose. No, because we're supposed to unexpect him uh, counting the three for his best friend, Triple H. Um, so, after that segment, um, the last segment of the night is what we go to with The Rock, John Cena, and The Miz. Um, it is what it is. The Rock comes out and says it's a lot of the same routine. That he does, he's a great motivational speaker. I think that's why The Rock can kill a promo. Well, not kill a promo, but totally, totally put one out there and have people behind him because he uh, he can definitely get it across to the people, you know, with a little bit of humor as well. Um, Cena thus, thus comes out and says, you know what? I was part of Team Bring It. I said a lot of things that I said even a few years ago because I wanted you to come back, listen to the crowd. They want you back, yada, yada, yada. Cena got booed out of the building. Um, and then he goes on to say what kind of problem he wants. Just to know uh, what his real problem is with Cena. What the Rock's real problem is with Cena. Um, why he's not allowed to wear certain clothes. Or listen to certain type of music. Or yada yada yada. Um, Rock basically comes and says he won't judge Cena. There's only one man who does that. It's good Lord above. Um, but the Lord won't stop him from whooping Cena's his candy ass all over Chicago. Um, Cena says if Rock wants to fight, he's here. Cena throws down the mic, yada, yada, yada. Gets in the face, the Miz comes out. Um, obviously to a, a bunch of boos. The Miz basically berates, um, um, the Rock more than he does Cena. He just tells Cena he's going to lose. Then he just gets in the face of the rock. Um, and he goes on and says the rock's not going to do nothing because he's a movie star. So he knows tonight that he's, you know, he doesn't have to worry about the rock posing a threat. Best leads to a bit of a melee. Um, as Cena looks out from ringside, um, we get Alex Riley tossed out of the ring. We get the Miz getting a elbow drop. That's right, the people's elbow. Um, and then toss out of the ring himself. Cena comes in from behind, sneak attack, basically, on the rock, gives him an attitude adjustment to end Raw. So, after a long promo with these three guys putting each other over and furthering the storyline going into WrestleMania to see what's really going to happen, it ends with an attitude adjustment. From John Cena out of nowhere on the rock. Even though he got booed out of the building, he still ends with that. So we'll have to see where this leads to at WrestleMania. Is the rock going to get revenge? Is he going to end up being a referee as well? Or what's going to happen, I guess, is the big question <laughs> come WrestleMania. Um, so, so, yeah, that's it, folks. That's my raw review. Um, I think, I don't know if I really talked too much about this last promo other than what they did, but the last bit of the promo could have been a lot better, not in my opinion. Um, I think they all wanted each other to look strong, with, with of course, Cena being the strongest and Super Cena, and that's just that. So, that's my two cents, folks, on the review uh, of Monday Night Raw. Um... Again, it may be rushed, because I'm already sitting at 14 minutes and 25 seconds right now, and I haven't even said goodbye. So, you can see how I went 20 minutes last time. Uh, so, I really got to change up the format, because YouTube isn't giving me any more time. <laughs> so, anyways, on that note, I am going to say good evening, good day, good afternoon, however it is, wherever you are. Subscribe, comment, like, or dislike. For Rass Rasslin' Rasslin' Reviews, I am Big Mike.